In this lesson, we'll talk about advanced materials. I've started with a preview render of this scene, and then in the V-Ray Asset Editor, click on the Materials tab to view the material list. We're going to start by creating our own car paint. So click on the new material icon here and pick the option for car paint. Then fly out the menu over here. Click on the car paint option here and also expand the flakes and the coat. These three options, car paint, flakes, and coat, will blend together to determine the final look of the material. So that we can concentrate on one at a time, let's go down to the coat and slide this slider to the left, which will turn it off. And then let's also turn off the flakes by sliding the flake density down to zero. Then scroll back up to the car paint, and we'll focus on this first. So the base layer, or the base paint, is controlled by three things here, color, reflection, glossiness. You'll already have a pretty good idea of how to set these values as they work similarly to color reflection and glossiness elsewhere. But to preview the effects, let's go ahead and draw a region around just the paint bucket. Then we'll apply this car paint to that bucket. And start our interactive render. Go ahead and play around with these values to get a good sense of how they work. Next, let's take a look at the flakes. So that we can see them, let's slide the flake density back up. And you can see the material update here now, where we see some blue flakes in the car paint. The color should be similar to the same one you chose for the base. For glossiness, this will control the glossiness of the flakes, so you can play around with that as well. The flake orientation controls the orientation of the flakes along the surface normal. So at a value of 0, the flakes would be parallel with the surface. And at a value of 1, they'd all be completely randomly oriented relative to the surface of the object. The density, scale, and size will work together to determine the overall size of the flakes. The density is how many flakes we see for a given area. The scale controls the scale of the area where the flakes will be distributed, and then the size is the size of the individual flakes. The value you set for the three will depend quite a bit on the size and the scale of the object in your model. For the flake filtering mode, you have directional and simple. The simple method will render much more quickly, but it's an approximation, whereas directional takes longer to render, but will be more accurate. Just be careful when you have directional selected, be careful when you have directional selected and then you change the size of the flake map size, you can quickly eat up many gigabytes of RAM. The flake seed will randomize the pattern of the flakes and the mapping type here will specify the method for mapping the flakes. We'll leave it at its default here. Next, let's talk about the coat. As the name suggests, the coat will be applied at the top. So sliding the slider to the right will turn back on that coat reflection. Of course, you could change the color, but we'll leave that all the way at white. The coat strength will specify how strong the reflections of the coat are, and the glossiness will control the blurriness of those reflections. Go ahead and play around with all of the values here in the car paint material to come up with your own. Next, let's take a look at the blend material. Click to add a new material and pick blend. Now let's add this material right away to an object here in the scene. And I'll redraw the region around just that object. Now back over in the flyout for the blend material, you can see that there's a base material here and it's set to none. So we can't see the object at all. Let's go ahead and set that to the car paint we just created to begin with. And we can see that that gets applied. Now with the blend material, you want to be careful here. The additive mode, if you check this on, will produce physically incorrect materials. So you definitely need to know what you're doing before you use additive mode. We're not going to do that here. We're going to go to the coat materials and click add coat. Now rather than adding a coat to this car paint, let's flip the car paint back down and pick the option for clay. Then for our coat, let's flip this down and pick the option for chrome. So with the blend material, we can have a base material of clay, but then have a coat using something like the chrome material. With the blend and the blend multiplier, sliding the slider to the left will lessen the amount of the coat that's blending down onto the clay, 
and sliding it to the right will increase the amount that's blending down. With the blend multiplier, again, sliding it to the left will weaken it and sliding it to the right will strengthen it. So the combination of the two will result in how strong overall the coat is being blended down onto the clay. Note that for the blend, you have the option to pick a texture. You can either use color or a black and white map such as noise. So I'll set this noise to an amplitude of four and then click back. And you can see the effect that that has now. So play around with the blend and the blend multiplier until you have something that you like for this blended clay material. Before we move on, I'll clear this region so we can get more of the scene back. But before it's done, I'll draw a new region that includes just a little bit more of the wall behind. In the Asset Editor, we'll talk about a new material, click on this icon, and let's add a bump material. The bump map material is useful when you want to add a bump map even when it's on top of a material that already has a bump map. So for example, we know that the wall paint white from an earlier example, when we scroll down, that we had added a bump map there. But sometimes there's a reason to add an additional bump over the top. So first, let's apply our new bump material to the wall. And then let's fly out the menu here and click on the option for bump. And you notice the base material, it's sort of gone away here. We need to set that back to the wall paint white. Then click on the bump in normal mapping. In here, we use similar settings that we would use for the bump map elsewhere. So for the map, let's click on the icon here and we're using black and white maps. We'll pick noise and I'll set the frequency to three and click back. This multiplier will be quite strong, so you can slide it around and play with it, but I'll set it down to a value of 0.1. Lastly, we'll cover the hair material. Let's draw a new region around just this fur object here, and then go over to your materials tab and create a new material. We'll create the hair material, and then let's apply this hair material to the fur object in the scene. Click on the option for hair here and make sure to twirl down the diffuse, primary, secondary, and transmission menu options. You'll see several swatches here that control the color of the hair. The overall color is a multiplier down onto the other swatches you see here, except for the transparency. So you can make quick changes to the overall color. For example, click on this swatch and you could switch to something more blue to change the fur object or the hair texture to blue. If you wanna have finer control over the color, set this overall color back to white, and then you use the diffuse and specular colors here. Play around with each of them to get a sense for how they work. And lastly, you have transmission. You have the color of the transmitted light, plus the amount that will transmit along the length of the strands or the width of the strands. So play around with these two to see how they work. I'll settle on these values here and let the interactive render show me the result. 